we'll guide you through how to make a paper Minecraft server. If you find this guide useful, then please consider subscribing and liking the video. We'll be guiding you through this step by step, so make sure it's this full video. First of all, we can close out of Minecraft like so. And what you want to do is just come onto your desktop and you want to go and right click. You can then hover over new and you want to go and click on folder. Then we can just go and make a folder called paper server, just like so. Next, go and open up a web browser, go and type in paper MC like so, and you want to come to the official site. On the page here, you can go and click on downloads, where it says server software, select paper. And as you can see, we've got the option for paper 1.21.1. Go and click on it and it should then go and download just like so, it doesn't take long at all. Open up your file explorer and go and locate it and here it is. And then what you want to do is drag and drop it into the folder you just made on your desktop like that. Thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this video. They should be your go-to Minecraft server host. At the moment, you can get 25% off your first invoice. So I'll go and put a link down below. They've got so many awesome features, but the great thing about using Apex Hosting instead of hosting it on your own computer, which you're doing in this video, because that goes and takes up your own resources. You have to go and share your network and things like that. With Apex, they go and host it for you. And when you're going and checking out, you can actually go and select paper as the server version. All these different versions here, it's really straightforward. The next thing you want to do is go and open up that paper server folder we made. Here it is. And what we need to do is go and right click, hover over new, and you need to go and click on text document just down here. Click off of it and then double click it to open it up. Now in the description of this video, we're going to go and have some text or a line which looks like this. And what you want to do is click, hold and drag over it to go and select it. You can right click and go and press copy. And then what you want to do is go and paste it in to this new text document, just like so. So this is the amount of RAM we're giving the server. We're giving it four gigabytes. You can go and decrease this or increase this. Four gigabytes is a good amount. I wouldn't recommend using more than half of your computer's RAM though. I've got 32 gigabytes, so four is fine. Click on file and click on save as. And in this pop-up, go to save as type at the bottom, select all files, and you want to go and type in run.bat. You can then go and click on save, and then it should go and create this new file here. You can go and close it. Now what you want to do is we need to go and change the name of the jar file. So select it once, then click it again, and you want to go and remove the numbers, the dashes and the dot, but keep dot jar. If you don't see the dot jar, that's fine. It's because extensions are hidden. So it should then just say paper or paper dot jar. And then what you want to do is go and run, run dot bat. Double click on it and it should now go and start like this. It's failed due to the EULA, but that's fine. Now, if you're struggling to even run this, it's likely because you don't have Java installed. So what we need to do is come into a web browser like so, and you want to head to java.com. What you want to do is click on download Java at the top here, and you want to go and download this and install it. And when you've got this, you also want to get the Java SE development kit, which you can find at the bottom of this page, go and click on it. And what you want to do is go and get JDK 21. I had 23 and it didn't seem to work. So it may be when you're watching this video, it is working, but I found that 21 worked for me. So select it, you can then go and click on Windows and get the installer here, download it, install it, and then try running the run.bat again. So I already ran it and it ran fine. So now I need to come to the EULA, double click on that. Make sure you agree to the EULA, so read through it. I already have, and you can then go and change false to true, like so. Click on file, click on save, and you want to return. Then run the run.bat again. As you can see, it's now going again. It's important that we're running Minecraft in the version the server is for. So in this case, the server was for 1.21.1. We saw that when we downloaded it. So what you can do is at the top of the launcher, click on installations and you can click on new installation. Go and give this a name, I'll just name it server. And then for the version, we need to find the version we want. So in this case, I want 1.21.1. .1, and then you can go and scroll down, find it and select it and click on create. And then you can go and find it in this list here. Here it is, I'll hover over it and go to the right and click on play and it's now starting. Here we are and then what you can do is go and click on multiplayer. You can click on direct connection and because you're hosting this, you can go and join it by just typing in local host, then click on join server and like that, I've joined it. You can see in the server, I've gone and joined here as well. 
Now, if you want other people to go and join, there are different ways you can do this. So now you want other people to go and join. To go and do this, you can go and port forward, or we have got a few other methods on the channel you can go and check out. They won't be able to use localhost. That's just because you're hosting the server, but that's it. You can now go and start playing with your friends. It's super useful. Remember, you'll need to keep your computer on and this running to keep the server online, which is why Apex can be a great alternative you can go and look into, as well as going and keeping your uh, network more private as well. So if you found this useful, then leave a like.